All right, yo, what's going on? Um, so it's been a hot minute since I have released a quick tip, uh, especially with Espresso. Um, but I am currently working on a project right now uh, with multiple artists um, in the pipeline, and I needed to build a system that allowed for an agile development so our artists could hop in, drop a bunch of these items uh, into this project, and it would require little to no effort on my part to maintain. Uh, it could just self-sustain and, and go along uh, as the project grew and grew and grew. Uh, the really cool thing about this is that it builds on what I did for the link list uh, tutorial, but it doesn't require extra fields. Uh, in programming, you have things called watch folders. Um, and this is essentially that, uh, but for Expresso and for Cinema 4D. So without wasting any time, let me dig into this and we'll kind of go through the very, very simple setup, but how elegant it is. All right, so uh, let me show you how this works. And if you're not familiar with Expresso, it's really, really easy to set up. You just go over to uh, any object that you want to have the Expresso tag, and then you can go into, just right click, uh, and search and type in Expresso. Yep, there it is. Uh, and then you could add it to the tag. So I already have this set up, but I want to break down sort of how this works. Um, whereas if you remember in the other tutorial that I released from my link list, it required you to have um, in slash exclusion fields with custom user data that you would have to drag things in and out of. Well, I came up with this idea of using a hierarchy and an index, object index node in Expresso to create a watch folder. And so I have this little simple setup here, uh, and I've got a couple of them. Uh, we'll just break down one of them, and you can kind of see sort of how this works. So uh, here's a folder called headwear. It is hidden, right? So I've got the stoplights uh, both set to red. Um, and then I have a subsequent uh, instance node, or sorry, an instance object uh, below it. And so what I'm doing is I am taking uh, this field. So in this case, this is the main selector headwear, right? So I'm adding it uh, to a, just a blank object node. Uh, and then what I'm doing is I'm piping this in to a hierarchy Expresso node. Uh, so that way it is allowing the maximum iterations to only be set to one at a time. Uh, and the beauty of this is this allows you to choose what item you want based on custom user data. So, for example, if I were to switch uh, this field, it would basically select the object in the list. And so how is it doing that? Well, by combining a hierarchy node with an object index, um, this is where the sort of the magic happens. So what I'm doing is I'm saying in the hierarchy node here, uh, it's an absolute path and it's looking at any item that's in this folder. So you can see uh, in headwear, I have a bunch of nulls, right? Uh, an empty one and I've got a bunch of nulls that are nested with you know, three dimensional objects. I'm saying go down from there and then one uh, next over. So down next. So anything in here um, is going to be referenced. Then I'm taking the, I'm basically making an index of the entire system, okay? Uh, and normally in programming, you would start at zero. Well, that's great for the computer, but not very user-friendly for your artist. So a quick way around that is if you get a math node, an add node in this case, uh, I'm taking the index, putting it in the input, and then I'm just adding one to it. And you can kind of see, so I get an, an additional result. So right now, for example, uh, in my selector, I'm at two, okay? If I were to just pipe this directly into here, it'd say one, and that seems okay here, but when you go to here, it's now zero. So we don't wanna do that. We wanna be able to create a system uh, that makes sense to the user. So I am just now, making it one for one. I'm skipping the initial start. Uh, and then basically what I'm doing is after the object index node, I have an empty object. So this could be anything. It doesn't really matter. 
but you could go in here, new node, espresso, general, uh, where are you, objects? There you are. Um, and this is just an empty placeholder, right? Um, but in this case, just, you know, make it nice and simple. Just gonna use the first stack of the list, no accessories. Then I'm going into here, going into object, and then I'm piping that into the object index. So after this point, uh, what I'm doing is I'm saying whatever the position, so the X, Y, and Z, and the H, P, and the B of the, uh, of the you know, instance object. So in this case right now, it's no headwear because this is the one that it's using. So you can see these are the coordinates and the rotations, right? Um, I'm then now piping that into the instance. I'm also um, piping in the reference object, which is really important here. So in this case, you can see reference object. So this is being generated dynamically on the fly. And then I'm changing the name of it. May seem kind of silly, but the reason I do this is you could have this fully collapsed. And when you're selecting uh, the item in the list, it'll tell you right there. So let me show you how this works uh, if there was nothing here. So the beauty of this is you can drag all these bad boys out, all right? And now if when I have this set to one, right, there's nothing else in the list, you know, even though I have this custom user data selecting, but the second I drag any of these items into this list, I can then on the fly change them out. And this is amazing because it allows you to work programmatically uh, with your, with your non-technical artists and build them a system that they can work upon, right? So if you're having you know, a pipeline where you've got, I don't know, 300 objects uh, that you wanna build with takes um, and tokens, this is a really great way to set up that rig so you can then go in and just record them on the fly in your takes. Uh, you can work with CSV data this way. It's really cool. Um, so I highly recommend giving this a test spin. I'm going to also include a stripped down version of this file, um, where it's just, you know, the one, uh, node structure. So you guys can poke a look at it and see how this works for yourself. All right. Thank you so much. Uh, it's been real. Cheers.